Now, the majority caucus in parliament has fired back at their colleagues on the other side, demanding proof of claims of sabotage by government in the withdrawal of the military protection for the Speaker Alban Badbin. Now, this comes in the wake of a leaked document from the Ghana Armed Forces directing the withdrawal of some four soldiers from the office of the Speaker because they were assigned without court proper procedure. Now, the minority is claiming the move is calculated to weaken the Speaker in his persistent bid to impartially and independently steer the affairs of Parliament. Leader of the side, Maharana Idris, who says the action is cruel and ugly. He warns that the development could affect consensus building on the floor. I wish to express the profound indignation and disappointment of the NDC minority in the directive by the Ghana Armed Forces and by extension the executive arm of government to withdraw the military personnel providing for the safety and security of right honorable speaker Alban uh, Bakbin the action is not only cruel and discriminatory but does not augur well for the unity of the state and for the stability of the republic i'm utterly disappointed in the Ghana Armed Forces, who ought to live above reproach, and utterly disappointed in the Minister for Defense and the Executive uh, President for sanctioning such an action. For what gain? For what political gain? It's not healthy for our democracy, and not when you are seeking to build a consensus you engage in this uh, show of brute force. It's ugly for our democracy. The developments are not good at all. And you expect that tomorrow you come saying that you want to build consensus? Consensus with whom? What is even more worrying is the fact that ministers of state have provided military guard and supported by soldiers, chief executive officers, even chairpersons of commission have four, five, six, seven military personnel around them. And we cannot have this for uh, the third uh, most important uh, person of our republic, the speaker of parliament. That's cruel, that's inhumane, and that's discriminatory. We would not countenance these discriminatory actions of the executive intended to gag or intended to weaken the political uh, minority, to weaken the political opposition, to serve what gains. The Ghana Armed Forces is a state institution, and one expects that they would know that they owe the high public officer Right Honorable Speaker Alban Bagwin, a duty of care and a standard of care in respect of his safety and security. He is simply not ordinary. And same courtesies, privileges and facilities that are extended to the President, the Vice President, same ought to be installed for the protection of the Speaker. I'm utterly disappointed. So we'll delve more into this shortly, bring you details of the majority caucus statement. Uh, but there's also another development involving a member of the minority. I'm talking about Kezala Tufosin, who is the ranking member on the Finance Committee of Parliament. He was in court Monday after being charged with causing financial loss to the state in the purchase of ambulances in the NDC administration. More on that. But we are learning from our court correspondent that that case has been adjourned. But outside of court, the Deputy Majority Chief with Muntaka Mubarak says they are learning of a series of actions lined up by government to simply frustrate the minority side. More than uh, vindictiveness, trying to intimidate the, the minority out of their difficulties. But this is not going to change anything. In fact, it makes us even more resolute. Uh, because we know that, oh, okay. The game is to intimidate, to frustrate, and to think that they can weaken our spirit. 
No, they can't. In fact, they are rather strengthening and gluing us together. Because you will draw speakers the same. You are bringing out to to court. You are tiding uh, Dominic Eini because of the Arungu market. That has to do with this assembly. You are bringing uh, uh, Kwesin, criminalizing him when he wrote a letter to e a letter commission before he filed. You are tiding the uh, Akutia MP. You know, you can just see the frustration. And so shameful that they forget that there's a democracy. And unfortunately, this is being led by so called Lenin. As far as you for are now, we are concerned. This is this, no, but believe me. They are rather strengthening our, our, oh, us no. because now they are making us even glue together. Okay. Now we know that every one of us is in danger. Oh, nice. uh -huh. So it's better we glue together. And I can tell them, they can choose to withdraw all the security that follow all the 137 of us. They can choose to even take all our salary because they think they are in the executive. But believe me, it is rather going to strengthen us. But they remember, nothing lasts forever. So the majority has responded to the minority in the statement. My colleague MFA Powell joins me via Zoom with details of the statement. MFA, I know they are asking for proof in that statement, but what are the other details? Okay, so they seem to seek to set the record straight on some okay. of the narrative when it comes to this particular issue. Mm. So amongst others, they want to make it clear that this is the first in history of the Fourth Republic that a speaker has had the Ministry of Defense give provide military protection. And earlier, we saw a statement from Professor Michael Quay stating that he's never used the military in terms of his protection. That is they so. go on to also ensure, make, make public, that the speaker has on many occasions been giving the CASA airplane, which belongs to the military, okay. and helicopters to carry the speaker to his region and home village. Mm. Again, when the speaker was invited to Nigeria, the presidential jet, the same controversial jet, was placed at his disposal. Okay. They also mentioned that these facilities have not been accorded this previous speaker. So it does appear that the right on Rubble by Bing is unappreciative of these gestures from the state. They also detail the number of protection or police or military personnel mm -hmm. that he has at his disposal. So they say he has four police officers in his known residence. Okay. He has three police officers in his secretariat. He has five other policemen in and around the speaker's office block. Any day, any time, they add. Indeed, none of the previous speakers had half of the police cover, as has been accorded Right Honorable Bagwe. Mm -hmm. So it must be emphasized for the record that Right Honorable Alban Sumana Kingsford Bagwe has been served with the largest number of security personnel for his protection mm. that none of the previous speakers had. That so is in interesting. the event that if the military insists on regularizing his security detail, how does that compromise the, secu the, the speaker's security is one of the key questions for them, or put him in harm's way. Part of the narrative, uh, we've heard the minority mention that uh, they are trying to put the speaker in harm's way amongst others. The speaker himself has also stated that he was being put in harm's way by the, uh, you know, that secret letter or document mm. that we got hold of. So yeah. this seems to put the, set the record straight. They also talk about the Speaker of Parliament in terms of precedent. Mm. is the third gentleman of the land, and one expects that when he's exiting the jurisdiction, he must inform the presidency ahead of time. Mm. So the Speaker is the person to act as the president in the absence of the president and the vice president. So in all the mm. many troubles of the Speaker in 2021, he did not find it worthy to inform the office of the president. What is the import of that is the question that the majority proposes. And that is a very interesting comment being made by the majority, Amifa, because uh, this is mm -hmm. completely different from the issues that are at stake, the issues of so the it speaker's appears, security. So it appears it's a bare it all statement for the majority mm. purpose. Uh, issues uh, that have come to public and those that have not, so they are trying to address all these issues to let the public know that this is what has been done for the speaker. In, mm. ter in spite of uh, all the comments that have been made by the minority, that the speaker is being put in harm's way, nothing is being done for the speaker amongst others. Interestingly, uh, uh, NS, they also go on that on January 7, 2021, in response to an invitation to ensure peace in parliament, the military entered the grounds of parliament. The minority caucus subsequently raised issues about the intervention of the military. Whereas they had condemned the military less than two weeks to the January 7, 2021 incident, the speaker, they say, instructed the clerk to write to procure the services of the military for him. Mm. The paradox, they say, is worth noting, and that truth is sacrosanct. 
So it's, an, it's a nine-point statement from the Very majority well. caucus. The last two, NS, if you may indulge me, Go ahead, says that the right honorable Bagbin is the only speaker who was invited serving military officers to serve in parliament. He has, he's the only one, they say, who was invited seven military officers to serve in parliament. And that parliament now has a serving kennel as the marshal of parliament. This, they say, has never happened in parliament since 1957. So if, in the opinion of the speaker, the police have some deficiency, mm. shouldn't all of us work to cure any deficiency so detected? That's a quote. And then finally, it says, now the minority caucus statement states that the action by the military high command is politically motivated. They are quoting the minority. They are asking, what is the proof, which mm. we were making reference to earlier? Yeah. Or is it the case that they consider that since the right honorable Babbing is NDC, he is there to do the bidding of NDC and hence any critique of the speaker or any action aimed at the speaker is a critique of or action against the NDC and therefore should be considered as being politically motivated. They also question the speaker, asking him whether he's indeed there to represent the NDC or he's there to be an independent referee or independent arbiter for that matter. But interestingly, I was hoping to see someone sign the statement, but there is no name under it. It's only on the, the letterhead of the majority caucus, Parliament of Ghana. That's the statement. And, and I'm glad you raised that issue because we've been making efforts to get somebody on the majority side, at least in the leadership, to speak to this, and it's been quite challenging, Amifa. Indeed, NS. Thank you very much. That's head of our security Dex, MFA Power, bringing us details of that statement released by the majority caucus. Let's do more on this. Kenel Festus Abwaje joins us on the line uh, with some analysis on this. Kenel, I'm grateful that you could join us here on Join News Prime. What do you make of the withdrawal and the justification that has been given uh, so far? Well, thanks for having me. Let me restrict myself to the withdrawal. Very well. And all the other related you know, around this uh, episode. Mm. The, the impression I'm getting is that the system of governance is not working properly. So if the system is working properly, in the first instance, if the speaker left this jurisdiction without informing the appropriate authority, let's say he did it somebody should draw his attention to that and humbly remind him of the correct procedure. We should not wait until when matters come to a head before we use that as, you know, an argument. Now, I'm very well informed from sources close to the, the former Right Honorable Speaker, Doa Jao, that in this fourth republic, this is the first time since 2021 that the right honorable speaker has been given that facility of a military security detail. It's never happened. Now, why it happened upon the letter that the parliamentary service or whatever wrote directly to the Ghana Armed Forces is something that we must look into. I'm of the opinion that the armed forces is under a ministry that supervises the functions of the armed force. If any NDA entity in this country needs some services from the military, especially from any arm of government, they must write to the Minister of Defense. Mm. Why that letter went directly to the armed forces, I don't know. We cannot and assume that he was in the know. We yeah, cannot assume that the minister was in the know. Well, the, 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 the document that has come as a response to this report shows that it was parliamentary service that wrote to the Ghana Force. It didn't say they wrote to the Minister of Defense. But even if they wrote to the Minister of Defense, and especially if they didn't write to the Minister of Defense, it has created a situation where the Ghana Armed Forces has now been drawn into this avoidable, you know, chaos. So I'm of the view that the Ghana Armed Forces should not be writing to arms of government. Mm. They should write to their minister, and the minister would inform the appropriate arm of government. I have suggested somewhere that 
All of us are equal before the law, mm. and they're democracy. But we know that some of us are more equal than others. So therefore, in a can we say, it would have been more appropriate for a military delegation to have gone to the speaker to inform him about the action that they were contemplating, rather than you know, writing directly under the hand of the chief of staff, which I disagree with. Well, I've seen do uh, documents being signed by the chief of staff based on the weight of that document. And I think the, sorry, the chief of defense staff should have been the one who should have signed that letter. But appropriately or more appropriate, okay. it should have been the minister. Mm. Now, now the, we are seeing uh, that, I mean, this is, as you rightly mentioned, this is the first time the speaker has been given military protection. Uh, but he, he gave this, he put in this request based on what he thought was the insecurity situation uh, in, the, no. in the part of the country, see, the northern in, in part of the country. And this is something that I think the political class or civilian class don't understand. There are procedures and there are mechanisms. Unless you declare a state of emergency of sorts, you cannot whimsically, capriciously, be assigning the armed forces to undertake certain functions. So ordinarily, the Ghana Police Service, with the exception of the president, everybody else who requires security must be protected by the Ghana Police Service. However, if there is a situation of emergency, a security situation, whether externally induced or internally induced, based upon the state of emergency, the president by executive order can't order that certain entities must be given military protection. Very that well. is the appropriate thing. Very well. Can the way so in which we have seen the EC and Attorney General and certain lawyers being mm. escorted by the military is highly inappropriate. It is not democratic. Thank you very Indeed, much. It undermines the Constitution. Mm. I'm grateful that you could join us with your thoughts on this development. That's Ken Ofesto Sabwaji, a security analyst, joining us on this development. We'll bring you more in the subsequent bulletin.